Now this talk will be presented by Professor Masato Majino. Uh, Professor Majino from, is from uh, Nagoya University. Uh, you know, Nagoya University is very famous in uh, surgery for craniocarcinoma since Professor Nibura. Uh, Professor Masato Najino is a great uh, surgeon, and uh, he's now the professor and chair of surgical oncology department of surgery on Nagoya University. Yeah, please, uh, Professor Najino. Good morning, everybody. <coughs> Thank you very much for kind invitation. Uh, today's my talk is uh, hepatopancreatodudenectomy, so called HPD or craniocarcinoma, very challenging surgery. Uh, <coughs> Cholangio carcinoma often exhibit an extensive uh, ductal spread from the hepatic hilus to the lower interpancreatic bile duct. The left panel is a resected specimen after light hepatectomy with pancreatodudenectomy. Uh, this is a typical uh, case of diffusely infiltrating tumor. The right panel is also a resected specimen after a light hepatectomy with pancreatodudenectomy. Uh, this case is a distal papillary tumor with uh, upward superficial spread. Uh, these tumors can be resected only by hepatopancreatodudenectomy HPD, which is technically demanding and the most challenging procedure. The left panel shows a compression photograph after a light trisectionectomy with pancreatodudenectomy, and the left panel shows a, a compression photograph after left trisectionectomy with pancreatodudenectomy. Unfortunately, early experiences of HPD more than 10 or 20 years ago were associated with high morbidity and high mortality, uh, which leads to an uh, underestimation of the survival benefit of this uh, challenging procedure. As you know, uh, the bile duct resection, pancreatodudenectomy, and the hepatectomy are established standard procedure for craniocarcinoma. HPD is indicated for cases of craniocarcinoma with longitudinal extension. And this procedure has been performed mostly in Japanese uh, leading centers. When a tumor has both vertical and longitudinal extension, hepatoligament, pancreatodudenectomy, so called HLPD, is indicated. I will mention this super extended surgery at the end of this talk. Uh, first, I show you several representative cases of HPD. Uh, this is a typical case of diffusely infiltrating cholangiocarcinoma. Uh, PTVD catheter was placed from the right side. Uh, tumor uh, extends from uh, just below the hi hepatic hilus uh, to the intrapancreatic bile duct. This type of tumor is a good candidate for light HPD. Uh, in this case, uh, tumor involved the main portal trunk so that we performed combined resection and reconstruction of the portal vein. Uh, resected specimen shows a diffusely infiltrating tumor. Uh, histologically, uh, invasive cancer was found in, in this area. The bottom right panel uh, here, uh, <coughs> sorry, yeah, here, uh, uh, shows that the resected portal vein is involved by cancer. As the resection was achieved, however, uh, this patient died of peritoneal dissemination one year and 11 months after surgery. Uh, this is also diffusely infiltrating tumor. Uh, at local hospital, this case was diagnosed as inoperable so that self-expanding metallic stent was placed. After chemotherapy, the patient was referred to our hospital as the last option. Uh, we diagnosed that the tumor can be resected and performed salvage right HPD. 
Uh, as you know, salvage hepatectomy after metallic stent placement was technically very demanding due to severe inflammation with fibrosis in the hepatodrenal ligament. Uh, this markedly hampered accurate dissection around the portal vein and or the hepatic artery. Unfortunately, uh, in this case, vascular invasion was not found. Uh, as shown in the left panel, a uh, tumor was resected unblocked by light HPD. Histologically, <coughs> invasive cancer was found uh, in this area here. Our the resection was achieved. Uh, this patient is now alive with that recurrence for years, nine months after surgery. Uh, this is a typical case of superficial spreading type cholangiocarcinoma. Transpapillary forceps biopsy shows an extensive superficial spread uh, from the light hepatic duct down to the intrapancreatic bile duct. Such case is also a good candidate for HPD. Uh, resected specimen after light HPD shows extended superficial spread. Histologically, invasive uh, depth was FM uh, without lymph node metastasis. The patient is now alive seven years and one month after uh, surgery. Uh, this case is uh, uh, this type of papillary tumor here with upward superficial spread. From results of transpapillary forceps biopsy, light HPD is required to achieve curative resection. However, one big problem is that the celiac axis here uh, is obstructed due to sclerosis, as shown in the light panel. The blood supply to the liver, stomach, and spleen comes from the collaterals from superior mesenteric artery, indicating necessity of arterial reconstruction. HPD is usually performed in pancreatodrenectomy first manner. However, in this particular case, we performed hepatectomy first HPD to maintain the blood supply to the liver during surgery. Uh, hepatic artery was reconstructed by end to end anastomosis between gastrodudinal artery and replaced light hepatic artery. Uh, resected specimen after light HPD shows a papillary tumor with extended superficial spread. Histologically, invasion depth in this case was FM without lymph node metastasis. The patient is now alive. Uh, nine years and eight months after uh, surgery. In case of superficial spread uh, mentioned before, mapping biopsy is very, very important to accurately determine the extent of cancer spread. For this sake, transpapillary forceps biopsy is recommended. Uh, previously, we uh, preferred PTCS for mapping biopsy, however, a PTCS uh, followed by PTBD has potential risk of seeding metastasis, including PTBD sinus tract recurrence, as shown here, or uh, peritoneal dissemination. We showed oncological inferiority of P PTBD in resected hyalocrangial carcinoma. Uh, PTBD patients had poor survival compared to EBD patients due to significantly high incidence of seeding metastasis. Uh, recently, we reported that light-sided PTBD could induce uh, proidal dissemination because light-sided PTBD must be passed through the light thoracic cavity. Uh, concerning the seeding metastasis associated with PTBD, the performance of preoperative PTCS decreased year by year. After 2008, we have never used this diagnostic modality uh, preoperatively. Uh, next topic is HPD for recurrence of uh, cholangio carcinoma. In 2005, Professor Wakai uh, first reported that the survival for patients with positive margin with carcinoma in situ 
is similar to the survival for patients with negative ductal margin. Thereafter, several authors have demonstrated that positive ductal margin with carcinoma in situ has no survival impact. Uh, Professor Sasaki also reported the same results that the survival for patients with positive margin with carcinoma in situ uh, is identical to the survival for patients with negative ductal margin. We also uh, confirmed no survival effect of positive ductal margin uh, with carcinoma in situ. Blue uh, curve is survival of patients with negative margin. Yellow is survival curve of patients with positive margin with carcinoma in situ. These two survival curves are similar and significantly better than red curve showing survival for patients with positive margin with invasive cancer. Uh, these findings are statistically true. However, residual carcinoma in situ recurs as invasive cancer five to 10 years after a resection. Uh, therefore, when the primary tumor is not advanced, it is recommended to dissect all of the superficial spread by extended procedure, including HPD. I show you a case of recurrent cancer by residual carcinoma in situ. Uh, this patient underwent bile duct resection with Koredoko duodenostomy at a local hospital 10 years before. Tumor was early stage papillary tumor uh, here uh, without lymph node metastasis. However, uh, both distal and proximal margins were positive with carcinoma in situ due to uh, superficial spread. 10 years after the first surgery, the patient presented with jaundice. We diagnose this case as recurrence due to residual carcinoma in situ. We performed the right HPD. A severe adhesion was encountered, uh, which made the procedure uh, much difficult. Uh, macroscopically, curative resection was achieved. Uh, histologically, invasive cancer was observed at Koredoko duodenostomy. Fortunately, this patient is now alive without recurrence. 10 years and five months after HPD. Okay, next I mentioned super extended surgery, HLPD. Uh, again, I explain HLPD. When a tumor has both uh, vertical and uh, uh, longitudinal extension, hepatoligament, uh, pancreatoduodenectomy, so called. HLPD is indicated. This superextended surgery is very challenging and demanding. Uh, this is a representative case, uh, very, very advanced hyalocrangial carcinoma associated with congenital dilatation of the common bile duct. Looking at axial view here, uh, tumor involves the portal vein and the pancreas. And uh, uh, coronal view, uh, clearly demonstrated that the tumor extensively involves the hepatoduodenal ligament. Uh, <coughs> 3D reconstructed arteriogram shows the typical findings of encasement of the common hepatic artery, gastroduodenal artery, uh, proper hepatic artery, and right hepatic artery around here. The scheme of tumor extension indicates that the left trisectionectomy and the pancreatoduodenectomy with simultaneous resection of the portal vein and hepatic artery, so-called HLPD, is necessary for curative resection. Uh, in this operative uh, photograph, uh, pancreatoduodenectomy was completed. Uh, you can see that the uh, uh, peripancreatic and the periportal lymph nodes were completely uh, dissected. Uh, liver transection was almost uh, completed. A uh, light hepatic vein uh, here exposed on the transection plane. So this means uh, this resection is uh, anatomically correct resection. 
Uh, this is a compression photograph of this superextended surgery. The portal vein was reconstructed with external iliac vein graft. The hepatic artery was reconstructed with rotating left, hepa uh, left hepatic artery arising from the left gastric artery. Uh, operative time was very long, and the blood loss was about uh, uh, more than uh, 2,000 milliliter. A tumor was resected and blocked by HLPD. Histologically, tumor was modeled to differentiate adenocarcinoma with lymph node metastasis. Cancer was exposed on the radial margin, so that, unfortunately, surgery was judged as uh, R1 resection. Uh, she enjoyed active social life, but died of multiple liver and bone metastasis one year and 10 months after surgery. Uh, so far, I have performed uh, HLPD in nine patients with advanced perihylacrangial carcinoma. Uh, case one was a recurrent case after bile duct resection with hepatic or jejunostomy for uh, cholangio carcinoma. Case five was after left hepatectomy plus uh, cholecystectomy for intrahepatic stone 18 years uh, before. Regarding the type of hepatectomy, cases four and seven underwent light-sided hepatectomy. And the remaining seven underwent uh, left-sided uh, hepatectomy. Portal vein was reconstructed using external iliac vein interposition graft in seven patients. Hepatic artery was reconstructed using rotating, uh, I'm sorry, rotating uh, left gastric artery in six patients. Uh, one patient underwent radial artery interposition graft. In case one, arterial reconstruction was technically impossible. Therefore, arterial portal shunt was performed. R0 resection was achieved in five patients. In the remaining four, a surgery resulted in R1 resection. Several kinds of complications occurred, especially pancreatic fistula developed in all cases. Case eight, unfortunately died of bleeding due to grade C pancreatic fistula and liver failure on post-operative day 86. We had two longer survivors. Case one died of local recurrence, but she enjoyed for more than seven years. Case six is now alive without recurrence for more than five years after surgery. Uh, finally, uh, I show you surgical outcome of HPD, including HLPD. Uh, so far, we have performed HPD in a total of 134 patients with cholangiocarcinoma. 96% of patients underwent preoperative biliary drainage. 70% of patients underwent preoperative portal vein embolization. Main tumor location is was uh, perihyla in 100 patients and distal in 31 patients. Uh, the remaining three patients yeah, uh, had uh, recurrent hyla tumor after surgical resection for uh, cholangio carcinoma. Most of patients underwent major hepatectomy, including five light trisectionectomy, 75 light hemihepatectomies, uh, 18 left trisectionectomies and uh, 30 left hemihepatectomies. A total of 44, 33% of patients underwent combined portal vein and or hepatic artery resection. Uh, operative time was about 13 hours on the average. Blood loss was approximately uh, 2,500 milliliter on the average. Mobility rate was very high. Yeah, very high, uh, over 80%. Grade B or C pancreatic fistula occurred in 74% of patients. Four patients died of post-operative complication, and the remaining 130 were 
discharged from the hospital in good health. Just the mortality rate was 2.9%, which is acceptable. Overall survival, including all deaths, was 52% at three years, 40% at five years, and 25% in 10 years. Actually, 33 patients survived for more than five years, and seven patients survived for uh, more than 10 years. Uh, survival was similar between Hyla origin and distal origin. When we look at survivors according to curability, uh, here, M0 patients <coughs> Uh, survival for M0, R0 patients was uh, very, very good with five-year survival rate of 51%. Very, very promising data. Okay, this is my summary. HPD is technically demanding and associated with high mobility. However, this surgery can be performed with low mortality and offer a better chance of long-term survival in selected patients. HPD is now a standard procedure for laterally advanced cranial carcinomas that are otherwise undissectable. The most important thing is to pursue resectability, possibility of resection. So uh, the, in the session one, uh, Professor Lee uh, in MD Anderson Cancer Center, uh, endoscopist, uh, he said, more than half of patients, unresectable patients, died of cholangitis, not cancer. So even if the R1 resection, we surgeon pursue resectability. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Majino. Uh, any question or comment from uh, please? Yeah. Yes, Professor, uh, outstanding series. Uh, my question to you is regarding the use of frozen section to determine this, because often it's not, the preoperative imaging may not tell you you're gonna do both. So let's say you have a hilar cholangio, and then you do a frozen section on the distal, distal bile, or the, the distal bile duct. How do you counsel, uh, do you, if the, did you, do you discuss every patient, uh, the possibility of doing both? And that's the first. And the second follow-up is if you have d the margin that only shows in situ at the peripancreatic duct, will you still, for you showed the in situ data, will you still go on and do the Whipple even for in situ margin? We uh, routinely use uh, intraoperative frozen section examination, uh, both the distal side and the proximal side. Usually, uh, in surgery for hyaluronic carcinoma, we dissected the first distal side. So, distal sides, uh, all distal sides, we can use uh, frozen section examination. However, hyaluronic side, the, we dissected the hyaluronic side later in the surgery. Unfortunately, uh, uh, Department of uh, Pathology in our clinic closed 5 p.m. <laughs> So if the uh, time, longer operation, we can't use the proximal side. Otherwise, we routinely use uh, the frozen section. And uh, if uh, distal side is positive, uh, such, in such situation, the lymph node metastasis, no, and the proximal side, okay, we uh, aggressively uh, performed additional resection. Uh, uh, additional resection, also positive, we sometimes uh, performed pancreatic duodenectomy. However, higher side, uh, technically, two or only one or two millimeter additional resection is possible. So according to our data, such limited resection, no survival impact. Yeah. Is this okay? Okay, yeah, Professor, yeah. From uh, I can realize uh, the reason why you take a uh, distal section margin because it may be lead to uh, HPD, so it's okay. But how about uh, proximal margin? 
uh, if the cross section of the proximal margin tell you that party for malignancy, usually uh, we, we can do nothing because uh, at the first uh, situation, we cut as far as possible. So usually for me, it's um, impossible to have a re-resection for the uh, bio death. What's your opinion? Yeah, I, I, I agree. As I said before, the technically the longer uh, additional resection is impossible at the uh, uh, proximal side. Only one or two or three millimeter additional resection uh, possible, but uh, more than five millimeter resection, never. So, so what's the point to have a, a section margin for proxima uh, bar depth? Mm. <laughs> Very <laughs> tough question. It's uh, important pre-operative planning. Pre-operative planning. Yeah. If we, river function is stable, yeah. and the proxi uh, mal mal proximal margin uh, suspected for cancer, uh, it, we choose trisectionectomy yeah. down hemihepatectomy. How do you get the balance between the uh, surgical mobility and the long-term outcome for patients undergoing HPD? Um, I, I you can't get the balance between the surgical mobility and the long-term outcome. Relationship between mobility yeah. and outcome? Yes, yeah, sure. I have no data. I have uh, many studies, uh, the relationship between mobility and uh, uh, poor survival, but uh, I have no data. I'm sorry. No. Okay, yeah. Is anyone? Okay. Now we thank you, uh, Professor Najino. Great uh, talk. Thanks.